Hey guys, Dov here, back with another unit highlight. Today, looking at Lion Chariots. We've looked at War Lion Chariots, or, sorry, War Lions themselves in the past. Today, let's have a look at the Lion Chariots themselves. Seems strange to say that they're underrated so shortly after coming out in their DLC, but a lot of people seem to have overlooked these guys. That's true of this unit class in general, that sort of higher tier armor-piercing chariot. I'm a huge fan of this class. Let's see what I can do. Both me and Flying Taco here, I'm playing the uh, classy Nagarith High Elves and, uh, of course, Empire for Taco. We both brought kind of weird builds here. I've got a princess on a griffin. I'm going to be opening up with some skirmish along with uh, bolt throwers on some war wagons here. A couple of reavers out of the flanks and a couple eagles for myself as well. A bunch of rangers and spearmen and then the lion chariot with a high mage. Got Hand of Glory, Apotheosis, and Tempest in case of Flying Lords, which Taco did not bring. Instead, he's got Gaston, the legendary Huntsman General, uh, Spearman with Shields here, uh, Empire Knights, and two Demigriff Knights, uh, Lance version, Silver Bullets. So a nice mixed Empire Force here. And yeah, right off the bat, I'm kind of maneuvering around my Lion Chariot, uh, War Wagon's doing some good skirmishing on my Princess. I'm counterfiring with the Bolt Thrower, although in hindsight, um, and just as kind of a tip for targeting priority, probably better off for me to target the Demigriff Knights. They're a much more expensive unit, and I can pick away models consistently, whereas it's actually going to be hard for me to pick off the models of the War Wagons. And uh, over here, I sent in the Lion Chariots and the Spearmen to support this engagement, but I totally forgot to pull the Lyrian Reavers back and around like I do over here. The Eagles then drop in, Spearmen... Also, a nice Penumbral Pendulum Rex, a couple of my Rangers there that had got good engagements on those Spearmen with Shields, but... Princess rushes in at this point. And, uh, yeah, we also get some support from the Eagles here. One of the Reavers gets absolutely canned. The other Reaver ends up holding up okay. We're able to beat this Empire Knight. Uh, this Princess is taking some damage from various Overwatch fire here, so we're gonna pull her out. We can keep that trickle healing uh, up as long as possible. But over here, I want to take a look. Uh, the Lion Chariot, combined with these Spearmen <laughs> and Illyrian Reavers, are beating the Empire Knights, and this is one of the reasons why I like these higher tier armored chariots, is you can use them in ways that you, you know, shouldn't, you think you shouldn't be able to use chariots, but this is not your historical uh, horse-drawn chariot. I mean, these are pulled by lions, right? So, it maybe makes sense that they can fight heavy cavalry, more so than your typical uh, historical-based chariot, but here, uh, we're using the eagles, trying to find good engagements to uh, pop them down, maybe snipe some casters or something. Reavers going after those war wagons, actually get caught up by the Demigriff Knights there. Uh, well done by Taco to kind of keep that back. We get a volley of high arrows through the side of these hand gunners, and then land right on them with the eagles. Another little apotheosis right there. Hand of Glory, actually, to juice up the attack of that Great Eagle. We also got some Rangers into this back line as well, so we're starting to bog down some of the guns. Um, but again, still a little bit of mispriority on me, still shooting the War Wagons. These Demigriff Knights, the two Demigriff Knights, really are the biggest threat. I mean, this this Warline Chariot could kill basically everything except the Demigriff Knights, right? So I really should be pr prioritizing them, and you can see now I do switch over kind of realizing... A little bit late, um, just in terms of uh, the concept of targeting priority, there's a couple ways to think about it. Um, me going after the War Wagons was like, well, I don't really have anything that can do great at catching the War Wagons, was my thought, even though I actually did. Um, and so I'm going to shoot them instead, but honestly, the, there's a couple things. The Demigriff Knights, like I said, are the most expensive, and likewise, in terms of uh, win condition, right? They're almost like a win condition unit, so if I can shut them down, my Lion Chariot's going to go ham and probably kill everything else. So we'll see. Uh, not looking great right now, but I'm feeling confident I can potentially pull this back if I can start to defeat some of these Demigriff Knights in detail away from the rest of their supporting units. The Rangers and Spearmen also holding out just fine there. That back line, though, a snipe attempt. Unfortunately, my Eagles very quickly ran out of steam. Uh, one of them getting gunned down by War Wagons there. The other one overchasing a little bit on the Hand Gunners. And losing out on the Reavers is pretty painful for me, because in this type of a situation, I could have detached a lot of the Reavers to clean up a lot of these routing units. Um, but here, finally, the War Wagons back over to the main engagement after having been missing in action for a little bit too long. Avoiding these Demigriff Knights. 
perhaps acting as a blocker if I can't stay out in front of them. Demogriff Knight, 75 speed, 82 speed on the Warline Chariots. You'd think the Lion Chariots are faster, but the, the difference in energy, or vigor rather, uh, you can see the Demogriff Knights are only tired while the Lion Chariots are exhausted, and I'm really hoping they bring the, from Troy the system in where you can actually see the vigor effect on the stat card, but here... The uh, Griffin Princess able to break the charge, then the Warline Chariots come in, and again, using Chariots like you shouldn't use them, uh, they do a ton of damage on the charge here to these Demigriff Knights, and Hand of Glory juices them up to 60 melee attack with 57 weapon strength. Wow, that was uh, very intense, Mr. Demigriff Knight, as you get terrified away. Uh, Warline Chariots pull away once again, and you can see now how m my line of thinking, I mean, having them over fighting the Empire Knights was... Obviously, again, a little bit of a mistake if I had had them on the other flank up against the Demis in that other engagement. Perhaps cycle charging them in and out of that engagement would have made it go a little bit better for me. But here we can charge back in, get a good charge on the infantry that are that are here. These spearmen will take a lot of damage from that. Splash attacks as well are really nice. We get in close, you can see that the, uh, the Lions, they'll do a forward splash attack. The whip side splash attack means there's multiple points of contact uh, for infantry to take damage there. And again, we're now going to do something that on paper seems really dumb and strange, but bumper cars, you guys may know if you've watched my, watched my channel for any length of time, is a valid tactic in this game. And again, the armor piercing of the Lion Chariots means they come in, do a significant amount of damage to the War Wagons on the charge, but at this point, the rest of my forces are kind of falling apart. Uh, the War Wagons still have a, enough ammo left to, to kind of finish things here. Just about routed this Jade Wizard, but the Gaston's still alive. There's still a handful of handgunners around. Uh, my my princess has been routed, as has the caster. But uh, yeah, these Warline Chariots ping-ponging back and forth between the Demigriff Knights and <laughs> the War Wagons are able to uh, finish off those Demigriff Knights. They come back around. Another charge on these War Wagons. They're actually going to break one of the units of War Wagons. And I think, did they actually kill a unit model there as well? Uh, no, I don't actually see the destroyed wagon hanging around anywhere, so maybe not, but still good HP damage regardless. Got that Chevron, 43 kills, so it seems a little bit odd to be highlighting a unit in a loss, but considering they're like the, the main sole bright spot of this army, and I will admit this army uh, needs some, needs some fine-tuning. Uh, it's just kind of something I threw together. Uh, a little bit too much anti-infantry. Like, in hindsight, I would definitely cut a couple of the rangers. I'd maybe keep two, maybe cut one of them. Um, and then bring a spear and an extra bolt thrower. I guess that'd be, yeah, exactly the same cost. So uh, just give me a little bit more anti-large infantry support and a little bit more anti-large missile support. And then obviously the targeting priority was a mistake as well. Likewise, having the, even though they won that engagement, the Lion Chariots took a little bit too long with those Empire Knights way out, way out over in the Boondocks. So uh, yeah, having them, supporting the Demogriff Knights would have been quite helpful. Credit to Taco there, played a Played a great game. 72 kills on one of the Demigriff Knights that was able to get loose. The other one we did a decent enough job of dealing with kind of by the, the combined effort there of the Princess and some various other tools. But yeah, the Griffin Princess I think is a tricky tool. It's, it's a fun one. It's one that I enjoy using. I don't know that it's necessarily ever going to be competitive, but it's definitely an interesting one. Uh, the volume of high arrows I didn't use super well. Probably could have used that a little bit better also. But again, the Warline Chariots were the main sort of bright spot in this build. And they would, they would definitely be something that I would uh, play off of a little bit more, perhaps, uh, in, in this type of a build. They have a few things going, and we'll just kind of go into some more comparison mode. I know, I know I've done a... Uh, recently did the flares and kind of did a little bit of comparisons there. I still think flares probably have better animations and just uh, overall a better unit in this class. But the main benefit of Warline Chariots is their speed. Um, they are very fast for chariots, only outpaced by the wolf-type chariots. But 82 speed plus, they have 30% missile resistance as well. It's quite nice. 80 armor is a little bit lower than other units in this class, like flares we know. Uh, only 90 armor baseline, which is of course a little bit higher, but then they go way up with this best defense here. But uh, the speed and the charge bonus really set the lion chariots in... in I'm not going to say a class of their own, but the, the sort of different factors combined there mean there's a little bit more going on than, say, like the Razorgore Chariots. Now, granted, Razorgore Chariots, um, yeah, even higher base charge, plus they get this Primal Fury buff, so their charge goes way up even more so. 
But uh, they don't have the same defensive capabilities. I mean, a little bit more armor. And I guess same melee defense, but they don't get martial prowess, right? Which, while that's active, the Warline Chariots uh, will be quite a bit tankier. Up to 40 melee defense for a Chariot unit is actually pretty intense. Plus the missile resistance. So, yeah, even though there's a difference in armor, they also have... More HP. Wow, that's interesting. Usually elf units have less HP, but uh, I find it a little bit odd that the Warline Chariots don't also have no forest penalty, considering you know they're they're lions and anyway. But uh, the Razor Chariots also uh, they actually do have no forest penalty, which is nice. Both cause fear, and in fact, I think most flayers cause fear also. No, they do not. But I want to say Gorbis do. So a lot of the units in this kind of uh, high-tier armor-piercing chariot do cause fear. Yeah, Gorbis, just not a lot else going on there. They're just a little bit tankier. Um, basically the same HP, but more baseline armor. Slower, significantly slower. And this is one of the main downsides of the Gorbis. 66 speed is, you know, a basic heavy cavalry speed. 82 is a lot nicer. Plus the better combat stats. I mean, baseline, better attack, slightly less defense. But we know about martial prowess, of course. And a little bit less charge, but higher weapon strength baseline. It's an interesting comparison. I do think War Lions, if I had to give a second place in this unit class, I would definitely give it to War Lions. Um, right behind Flares, I still think the animations of Flares are just so strong that it really sets them apart. But uh, it's not really, I mean, you can also kind of compare some of the lower, I say lower, still like high tier armor piercing chariots. I know the Boar Chariot's one that... A lot of people have kind of forgotten about. I think these things are actually quite strong um, for the cost. Where did they go? Here. <laughs> 950 points. 80 charge for that cost is pretty good, but again, much lower stats, leadership, uh, super slow. I guess even slower than the uh, Gorbis, which is interesting. But uh, yeah, like I said, if I had to give a second place, definitely go to the Warline Chair. It's a unit that I think you should see more because it's a great way of dealing with armor. I Hives tend to lack armor piercing in many aspects. Uh, people tend to bring and, and think that high armor units are good against them, which is too, true to a degree, but the Lion Chariots can give you a, a surprisingly tanky, surprisingly versatile armor piercing option uh, to use in a multitude of situations. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.